guys and welcome back. On this week's show, part 6 of our scale model build. Well, we finished off last week's show with the uh, pretty much completion of the cab and now it's time to move back on the vehicle and we're going to start the parts for the sleeper. Now, I really don't see a need to post a video of this because it's simply a matter of paying attention to thicknesses of stock and cutting them according to the dimensions of the plans. It's an open-faced, hollow box. Um, so make your sleeper and then come back here and I'll show you what I've made and uh, we'll carry on after that is done. And there we can see the sleeper is done. Again, nothing more than a hollow box. Um, I placed some half inch pieces up here just to assist me in putting it together and unfortunately what that did was made this visible through the back window of the cab. So I will most likely be getting out a router with a straight bit and trimming this out of here uh, now that it's all dried up in order to uh, make it so it's not visible from the window. No big deal. Live and learn. Stuff happens. So this still needs to be sanded and uh, then once we get that done we can move on with some more of the details of the vehicle. So like I said it's time to start working on some of the details of the uh, vehicle and I think we're going to start off with the front section being the headlights, the marker lights, that sort of thing. But I don't really like the way the plans have done it. So I'm going to do it a bit of a different way and I'm going to show you the method I'm going to use and you can make your own decision as to which one you'd like to place on your model. Well you can see here that what they're calling for is a headlight base. It's 1 16th of an inch thick and then they're going to place the headlight lens on top of that. You know, it was 1 16th thin, you know, this quarter inch by 5 sixteenths. Um, this to me, you know, although it works, it's extremely difficult to line these up and get them glued up where they look good. And I'm not really a fan of it and I'm going to change it up. And what we're going to do is we're going to get some scrap wood, we're going to take some measurements and we're going to glue together a block that we can cut headlights out of. So let's start off with the stock we're going to use. Well, let me see if I can explain this in a way that will get you to understand my kind of twisted way of thinking here. I've cut some pieces of poplar that are one quarter of an inch thick by five sixteenths inch wide. The length really doesn't matter. Make it long enough to work with. And what this is, is the end profile of this now coincides with our headlight lens size. I've also taken some pieces of walnut, which is a contrasting color here, and I've cut them to be as close to 1 seconds of an inch thick as I can. And what we're going to do is we're going to glue this together in kind of like a sandwich sort of thing, just like that. So we're going to alternate our pieces of 1 32nd inch thick walnut um, by quarter inch wide. We're going to alternate it walnut, poplar, walnut, poplar, walnut. Once that is dry, we are going to put on a top layer of walnut as well as a bottom layer. Now this is getting more difficult to hold, but then when you cut your end profile, it's difficult to see there, we will sand off the rough edges, get it shaped down, and we will have some light colored wood headlights framed by a dark walnut frame. So this is just another method you can use. It's a little difficult to see right now, but let me get this glued up and I'll show you what the end product is now that I've explained the method that I'm going to use. Well, you can see here that the first stage of that glue up is done. And uh, what we're going to do once that is dry is we're going to sand everything flush and square it up. I'm going to show you that step. Uh, but that's just a little later in the show because for now we have to leave that alone and let it dry up. You may be thinking, 132nd inch stock, where the heck do I get that? Guys, your table saw. And while that sounds a little dangerous, remember the combination square trick that I showed you. To have that off cut on the outside of the blade, be able to fall away and get the thin stock that you need without getting your fingers close to those blades or having your fence too close to the blade. Um, trying to cut a 132nd thickness 
uh, between the blade and a fence is just ludicrous. You're like you're not going to do it. So remember the sets or the combination square trick that I showed you in an earlier episode of this series. So while we're waiting for those headlights to dry, we're going to move on to the signal lights. And the signal lights is basically the same sort of thing, except we're not going to do the frame. What we need is two different species contrasting. In this case, I'm probably going to use maple and walnut. And you want one sixteenth inch thick pieces of each one and we're going to laminate them together so that one side is light, one side is dark and then once that's done we're going to rip it down and cut it to the final dimensions using our small parts cutting jig that I showed you earlier in the build as well. So once I get those pieces cut up we're going to show you how they get mounted. And there we have a quarter inch thick piece of maple and uh, what we're going to do is apply a little bit of wood glue here. You want a nice even coat, but not a thick coat. If you've got too much on there, just wipe it off. We don't want too much squeeze out. And we're just going to glue this 1 16th inch thick piece of walnut onto the maple. And what we're going to do is once this dries up, we're going to sand this flush so that you know, it's all mating together. And then we're going to rip this down here to give us a total of one eighth of an inch thick so that we have half and half maple and walnut. So we're going to clamp this up, put it aside, and then we're going to move back to our headlight pieces now because they are now ready for the flush sanding of our first glue up. Well, here we have the first stage of our headlight glue up and the biggest question I get asked about these model builds constantly is how do you get the sanding done and still keep the crisp lines? And uh, I, the, the main thing I can tell you here is if you have a power sander and you usually use it for your projects, get rid of it. Uh, for a model build like this, it doesn't necessarily work. So all we've got is a piece of MDF. We've got some sandpaper attached to it with spray adhesive and you just want to place your piece gently on that sandpaper and run it back and forth until all of these surfaces from our first glue up all the way along here are all level and straightened out. You don't need a lot of pressure, just careful slow working and once we get that done and leveled out then we're going to take our other pieces that we cut of the walnut and we're going to glue those in place top and bottom and then we will trim them afterwards to give us our headlight profile that you can sort of see there. So let's sand these up and get the second glue up of the headlight pieces glued together. And there's the second glue up of the headlight assembly done. We'll just put that aside and now we're going to take our piece where we glued the 1 16th inch thick walnut for the signal markers to our piece of maple and just like I said Use that sandpaper that's mounted on your MDF and just work it a little bit back and forth. Don't over sand. And in a very short time, you will end up with a very clean, very clean edge. This is very flat. The seam is almost perfect. A little more sanding will fix that up. And then we're going to take it over to the table saw and we're going to rip it so the outside of this ends up to be one eighth of an inch thick, which will be our two one sixteenth inch pieces. And that will be on the outside of the blade using that same trick that I showed you guys with, of course, the combination square. It's, uh, again, nothing magical here, guys. Just a little bit of trickery to to be able to make these things work the way you want them to. And there we go. I don't know how well it's showing on camera, but we have these pieces all laminated together. Nice clean edges on the lamination. Everything looks great. We're just going to take it over and using that small parts cutting jig that I showed you earlier in the build, I'm going to cut two pieces at five sixteenths of an inch wide. And uh, that is basically our marker lights. Using the small parts cutting jig and some setup blocks, I'm placing a 5 16th and a 3 quarter inch setup block against the blade, setting our stop block, and then locking it into place. 
From there, it's just as simple as removing the 5 sixteenths setup block, putting the 3 quarter in place, sliding our stock tight up to the 3 quarter setup block, removing that setup block, and then making the cut. Now, although this one sort of flies ahead a little bit, it doesn't go far when we're able to salvage it. Showing the process here again, three quarters setup block in place, stock up to the setup block, block removed, and make the cut. And although we only need two of these, I would suggest cutting a couple extras and then you have the option of choosing which one you like best, which one has the cleanest cut, you know, which one has the least amount of sanding, and that sort of thing. And using a lighter for scale, as some of you know I like to do, um, you can see how small and delicate these pieces are. Now it's just a matter of taking a 3 32nd inch dowel, gluing it to the bottom. It'll be about a half inch long. And then we're going to glue it in place in the holes of the fenders that we uh, drilled much earlier in the build. The only thing that you want to be sure of here is that you square it up to the front face of the fender so it doesn't look crooked or off. For cutting the headlights, we're going to use the same process as we used on the marker lights, with the exception of we're only going to be cutting them one eighth of an inch thick. But using the small parts jig, we'll cut two of these by setting it up as we did with the marker lights butting our stock up against that three-quarter block again, giving it space to let go once it actually cuts through, and then finishing through with the cut. And with those pieces of the headlights cut and glued into place, we still have quite a bit of the actual stock left over. And you may be asking yourself, why the heck would he go through all of that trouble for two little tiny pieces when he could have just glued some squares on? And my answer for that is this, the results. It is absolutely spectacular. I think it looks way better than what the original plan had called for. And what are you in a hurry for? Take your time, glue this up, cut it up, and make the difference between a model and a wow. Now that's a model. You see what I mean? It's all about the little details sometimes. And you also might be thinking, what a waste of wood. Not true. All of this was pulled out of the scrap bin. It was slated for the fire anyway. So why not use some of it up and use it up to get a spectacular result? So now that's that, that's done. The headlights look great. We're going to move on. We're going to glue those uh, marker lights, signal lights in place on the fender. We don't need a video of that. It's really nothing special. And, um, I'm going to have a look here. I'm not even sure what I'm going to do next on this, so I'm not going to say, but I'll see you in the next segment. Well, we've cut a few more pieces, and they're simple pieces to make. That would be the, the roof vent and some of the side rails that are on the top of the sleeper. Um, really nothing much to say about them other than for this particular piece being the vent. You want to make it from a, a larger piece and then, of course, cut it down afterwards just for safety. But what I'm talking about here now is alignment of some of the detail pieces. And this is something that a lot of guys take for granted when they're making these models. And the slightest little bit of something being off square can really make a difference. So I'm just gonna show you a method here that you can use to line up some pieces. And I'm gonna line up the three pieces here and glue them in place and show you how I go about that to get them as perfect as I can get them. And all I've got here is a marking gauge and it's squared off here to the edge of the ruler. And I've set it for three quarters of an inch, which is the measurement in from the back edge that I've got for this um, sleeper vent. And I have tiny little center marks marked here that will actually end up being underneath this when it's done. And at the back of this, I have tiny little barely visible center marks as well. And we just wanna put a little bit of glue on we don't want a lot because we don't want squeeze out. And it's as simple now as lining this up with the back, holding it in place. I've got this clamp to the bench as well. That frees up my hands. And that's always helpful to have as many hands available to you as possible. So we're going to line up our center marks there. 
put it in place, hold it up against that ruler that is now keeping it exactly three quarters of an inch from the back edge of the sleeper and let go, check alignment with everything and move your ruler away. Simple. It is nice and square and you know evenly spaced. It is dead center where we want it to be and it looks right. So we'll let that dry up and then we'll glue on these roof ribs. Our next step here is to put these roof ribs in place and like I said this section of the uh, build is more about the alignment and how to align things than it is about actually building them. So we're going to put a little bit of glue here on our rib piece and now this one here we know it's 3 8 of an inch in from the outer edge so I've set this to 3 8 however there's a second measurement here now so what I'm doing is I'm going to place this square here against the edge just to make sure that we are lined up here so that our zero mark of this rule that's along here lines up with the back edge of the cab and we want to be in 5 16 of an inch from the back edge so we're just going to line that up at the 5 16 mark and snap it down in place adjust it if need be to that 5 16 mark and just as we did with the vent once we're happy with its alignment give it a little push down we're going to double check to make sure that this is still squared up with the back edge of our sleeper and it is we're at 5 16 there we're tight up against this rule and then we'll just carefully take it away and just like that that piece is beautifully lined up we know that we're exactly the measurement we want away from this outside edge and we also know we have it right this way even if you set this tool wrong they're both going to be identical on each side so it will look right so I'm going to mount the other one and then we will move on and there those pieces are on the top of the sleeper nicely aligned I hope that little tip has helped you when you're making your model that uh, you can use whatever you have around your shop to help line these pieces up. Now, it didn't have to be a fancy ruler like that. It could be something as simple as, well, there's that combination square again. You can set it for the distance that you need it from the edge, and that will help you set both the pieces, even scrap pieces of wood cut to the sizes you need, whatever it takes as a reference to the edge to measure in to get them both the same. Well, there's a lot more pieces to add to this, guys, and I'm not going to be showing those because they're simple things like door latches that are simple squares, and there's a, a latch panel here. There's a couple more of these ribs that go down the back of the sleeper. There's all kinds of small little details like that that go on this piece that you do not need assistance in doing because I've just shown you the method. So make all those pieces, put them on your vehicle, and then when we come back, we're going to start working on things like the side view mirrors. Well, the mirrors are not difficult, but they are a little tedious. And it all starts off with a piece of UMHW plastic. Well, the actual mirror itself is nothing but a piece of flat stock that is 1 16th inch thick and to the, the dimensions on the plans. It's nothing special, but the actual frame for it is made from 332nd inch doweling and they're 45 corners and they get glued together and it's a bit of a pain in the neck. So what I've done in the past and it's worked really well is I've cut a piece of the plastic that I spoke of and I've cut it to the inside dimensions of our frame. Let me just turn this drawing so you can see maybe a little better and I've cut it to the inside dimensions of the frame here and all we need to do is cut our dowels to the 45 and to the lengths that we need and we have basically a jig here to mark for the length of this upper part and as well to get them glued in together and keep them perfectly square while the glue is drying. 
the reason for the plastic wood glue doesn't stick to it so once it's dried up you can just pop that out of there and then you go on to making your next one you may think it's a bit of a pain in the neck or a bit of a waste to cut this piece of plastic because it's pretty much useless after this but truth be told the amount of aggravation that it saves is well worth its weight in gold now if you were wondering the method I use to actually cut these dowels, it's pretty simple. It's just a little fine razor saw and a miter box. And uh, that of course will give you the nice 45 that you need. And you can cut it on both ends, cut them to the length. And once you get your pieces cut for the frame, I'll head back over to that little plastic jig and we'll go through the assembly of one of them. Well, it's time now for the assembly and we've got a piece of MDF here and I've got it coated with wax paper. I hope it's not creating too much of a glare on camera. And here is our piece of plastic for the jig. Now we don't need a great big blob of glue, just a little glue on the end of each one is sufficient. So I like to take a little bit on each end here of the longer piece, just a touch enough to give it coating but not enough that it's going to ooze out like crazy and then we just sit it down in place here on the jig now i find that using tweezers sometimes can help because it they, they stick to your hands sometimes which makes it difficult so we just put this in place lining it up with the edge of the jig here and push it in there just like that and then we'll get our other side in and rotate it, set it in place. And here again, here's where the tweezers comes in handy. And we will just rotate it, set it in place, line it up with our little jig. And there you go, Bob's your uncle. Now this one here looks like it's a little long, but that's okay. We can just adjust it here, just like this. Hold it in place and then get our other piece secured up against it and as you can see here it is quite fiddly to get this in here but once you get it it's good to go and everything's all right you can see here it's a little longer than what I would like so chances are I will end up scrapping this one and trimming it to make it uh, the proper fit and of course that just means that this longer piece up here is actually just a little too long but there you go there's the process for putting together that part of the frame and now we can just let this dry up and once it's dry enough you can just hold on to your plastic jig here and just using your tweezers just pop that out and then you can go ahead now and glue up your other frame for the opposite side once your frame pieces are dry you just want to give a light sanding on the corners just to round them off a little bit to give them a, a more realistic look of that metal tubing kind of thing now when drilling your holes for these particular pieces here to fit into your body of your cab don't go by the measurements on the plans because there could be discrepancies not only that, but the way you built your piece, your frame could be a little off, a little different. So measure in using something that you, know, you can reference, get the exact same upright to make sure that it's square to the body. And again, I'm using this particular gauge that I used earlier. And then using your actual frame, mark the center of your holes that you need to drill in order to get that done and once you get that marked carefully center punch them and then take it over to the drill press and now that we're over here at the drill press we need to drill those holes that will mount that bracket and you can see here that I'm using the back of the fence to make sure that I'm drilling square to the front and back of the cab I'm not going to angle it in and I'm just holding down carefully on these fender extensions to get our square reference that way. 
And once I'm happy with it, the square, I can check it. I'm going to clamp it to this back frame here, or this back fence, and then we're going to drill the two 332nd holes that we need to mount our side view mirror brackets. Well, now comes the easy part. That's just gluing these little brackets in place. We're going to put a little bit of adhesive or wood glue into each one of these holes. Just a touch. It doesn't take much to hold it and they're just like that and what we're going to do for um, our ability to make sure that this sits perfectly square and upright to the side of the body is we're using a setup block and that setup block is a 9 16 setup block and we'll just place each end of our bracket into its corresponding hole just like that and just like this and we will push it in place until it meets up with our setup block. And once it's flush on the setup block, we can let the glue set up a little bit. And then that one will be done. I'm having a little problem here getting it to get into that hole. The glue is causing me some problems. There we go. So we'll just put the setup block there, push this into place so that it sits flush onto this setup block. Now we know that both sides are perfectly square to the body here. We're going to get a, a cotton swab here with a little bit of water on it. We're going to clean up any of the squeeze out that's there in place. And once we get that done, we'll let that dry up. Well, while we're waiting for those brackets to dry up for the mirrors, I would just like to point out something else to you and here we have a platform that actually sits back here on the frame on the plans it's listed as a platform base and a platform and and what have you it doesn't matter um, the point being is in the interest of paying attention I guess the distraction of filming and and that sort of thing I have actually assembled this in reverse this walnut piece should be down here and this uh, poplar piece should be up here and because I've already glued on this frame bracket it's not fixable um, however me and you and now every other viewer on YouTube knows that that's a mistake but I'm not concerned about it it's just a little platform piece there and I'm okay with it being walnut it adds a little bit of contrast I'm not gonna make the piece over again and you know what they say if you want to make an omelette, sometimes you gotta kill a couple chickens. Or something like that, anyway. I wouldn't worry about the little mistakes. Well, the last piece of this mirror frame is nothing more than a uh, small piece of dowel, 332nd inch diameter dowel, cut at 45s at either end, and it gets mounted on the side of the vehicle. Um, and the lower bracket of our mirror. Now the plans show to actually uh, put this in place by drilling holes. I'm not a big fan of that method. Um, so for these I found it's just fine to put them in place just like this and they will stay there plenty strong. No worries. And I'm just using this edge here as a guide so that I know that the lower brackets line up with um, the existing brackets so that everything is square and flush. And now that that piece is in place, I will wipe off the squeeze out and I'll let that dry up. And then all that's really needed to be done is to cut the pieces of the mirrors and attach them. So that's not rocket science, just glue them on. Next thing to make is the stacks on the rig, and for that you're going to need some way to drill out the center of these dowels. For that you're going to need a jig in order to hold them. So all I've done, these dowels are 5 eighths of an inch, I've drilled a Forstner bit hole straight down through, and I've used the bandsaw to cut a kerf here, allowing me to clamp it shut. As long as you keep your fence on your drill press and your stop block in the same position, you shouldn't need to shift anything, so I can just change out this bit to the size that I need and it should provide me with an exact center registry to get this drilled out the depth that I need.
Well, that should provide you with a centered hole that will eventually house the top end of the stack. And of course, there's more to it than this, but you will drill the hole in the top section of the stack in the same process that you drilled it in the muffler section. So there's not really anything uh, crazy about this now that you've figured out the way of to drill the centers on these uh, conduits sort of thing, these wooden conduits. So go ahead and cut your pieces, glue them together for your stacks, just following the measurements on the prints. It's as simple as that. And if you follow along with those techniques that I showed you for center drilling of the dowels, you should end up with something that looks like this. Now this is not glued together on the bottom end yet because um, I will have to adjust that when I install it on the actual model. But what I would do now, and I intend to do, is all of our body sections, being the hood, the cab, the sleeper, and that little platform that we made, um, that will all get glued onto the chassis now and uh, that will hold everything together solidly and we can move on from there. And that would be all the time that we have on this week's show. Um, we've made some good progress and the build is moving along a lot faster as uh, there isn't as much explanation needed on some of the parts, some of the flat work that is there, like, you know, square panels and that sort of thing. I really don't need to explain that to you, so we are moving along a little faster now. Now it's more of techniques as far as how to do things like the center drilling and the lining up and all that sort of thing. Well guys, we're doing a great job, we're moving along really well, but we're not done. So of course, we are done for this week and I hope that you will join me again next week for yet another woodworking video.